What's going on everybody? This is Tatro with ADSR and today we're going to be checking out the Ableton Live 10.1 update. Now the update is still in beta, but we're going to check out some of the new devices and features of Ableton Live 10.1. All right, the first major update is the ability to be able to add your own wavetables in the wavetable synth. So it's really as easy as dropping in a wavetable synth and then finding some samples. Uh, I can stop. Like this random vocal sample and dropping it in. So now, just using the computer keyboard to play, you can scan through this new wavetable. You can combine these with existing wavetables in the second oscillator to make a hybrid between your own wavetables and existing wavetables. And right within the wavetable device, I can actually just scroll through my sample library. So it's just pulling different samples to create different wavetables. There's two brand new devices in this update, the first one being Channel EQ. Channel EQ essentially gives the simplicity of an EQ3, but with the control of a bigger EQ like an EQ8. The next new device is called Delay, and it essentially combines the elements of ping pong delay and simple delay into a single device. You can turn it into a ping pong delay with just the click of a button. Automation is made really easy in Ableton Live 10.1 because you can just select the section you want to automate, right click, and it gives you shapes so you don't have to draw them in yourself anymore. It also gives you the ability to stretch and skew those shapes with these little grayed out boxes here. So maybe I don't want the filter to cut so low, I can bring it up. Also now, instead of having to be super accurate with dragging up and down your breakpoints to find the exact value you want to be at, you can now right click on a breakpoint and edit the value and type it in directly. So the arrangement overview window can now be resized. So you can drag it down and you can get a better feel of what your arrangement looks like from there. I think this is gonna make it feel a lot more usable. There's also these controls here so you can make things fit the height or the width of your screen. And now you can pinch zoom. So all you have to do is use your trackpad and as if you were using a phone or a mobile device, you can pinch in and out of zooming. New shortcuts are also really effective. So I can highlight a range and then use Z or X to zoom in and out of that range. So if I want to hyper focus on something, all I have to do is select it, press Z. 
and suddenly it's pretty much occupying my whole screen. X to jump back out. If I want to expand a track, I can press H. Z to zoom in, X to zoom back out. You want to make sure your computer MIDI keyboard is turned off to be able to do this. Because otherwise, Z and X will change the octaves of your computer MIDI keyboard. If you're a VST3 user out there, you'll be happy to know that there will now be VST3 support in Ableton Live. So this is one of the more exciting features of the update. You can now freeze tracks that have sidechain routing. So for instance, this synth line is sidechained to the kick drum. And if that were say taking up a bunch of my CPU or I just needed to freeze it for some reason, previously in live you could not do that because it was sidechain routed to another track, but now it's just as simple as clicking the freeze button. Now you can export tracks with return and master effects. So if I go ahead and turn up that reverb on this synth, I can go ahead and export that. All I have to do is turn include return and master effects on in the export settings, and it will render out a track with those effects. Let us know which new feature you're most excited about and what features you'd like to see in a future Ableton update in the comments down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. This has been Tedro for ADSR. Have a good one.